Okay, so this is the second part of the of this video. Uh, we just ran out of time in terms of our lesson. So uh, we're looking at the control test one of 2021 of our school of last year. We're on question five. On question five, um, we are told that two events A and B are complementary, which means that they add up to one and make up the entire sampled space. Also, the probability of not A is 0.35. They ask to complete the statement. So the probability of A plus the probability of B would then be equal to 1 because they are complementary. In the last video, I drew it to overlap. It's not supposed to be overlapping yet. So here we got your A and your B, your subset. Okay. Because if they were overlapping, they, they won't be then complementary. Well, there's elements that belong to A and B, then set A and B won't be complementary events. Okay. Then the question says, write down the value of the probability of A and B. So A and B is basically where it overlaps. And as you can see, there's no elements or no overlapping between the two. So the probability between the two is 0 over 1, which is basically 0 there. Then in the next question, In, uh, in 5.1.3, this is write down the value of the probability of B. So here we are told that the probability of not A is 0, 0,35. So the probability of A is 1 minus 0, 0,35, which is 0, um, so 1 minus. 0, 0, 0,35, 0,65. Okay. So remember that A, the probability of A plus the probability of B is 1. So 0, 0,65 plus the probability of B is equal to 1. So the probability of B is 1 minus that, which is 0, 0,35. That's one way of looking at it. Alternatively, we could have said that the probability of B is the same as the probability of not A. So if you take that into account, if you got A and B, so the probability of not A is 0, 0,35, which is everything on the outside here. Yeah? But remember that if A and B makes up the entire set, then everything belongs to B which means to say B would be 0, 0,35 from the beginning all along, okay? Okay, so um, let's go to the next question. In our next question, we are told a survey was conducted amongst 150 grade 11 learners to determine how many own the following devices. We have two devices here, which is the smartphone and the tablet. Okay? We have a sample space. It's a sample was conducted amongst 150 grade 11 learners. So again, we're going to overlap it, the smartphones and tablets. Okay? So, they want to know, okay, that the results were as follows. Eight learners did not own either a smartphone or a tablet. That means to say that eight doesn't belong to any of these uh, two sets here. So that means to say 8 is on the outside, okay? 20 learners own both smartphones and tablets. So 20 would then go in the middle because it belongs to both sets. 48 own tablets. So that means to say that that plus that is equal to 48. It didn't say 48 own tablets only. If it had said tablets only, then I would have put 48 here, okay? 
but 48 own tablets, so 48 minus 20 is 28. So 28 own tablets only. X owned a smartphone, which means to say that 20 plus that part is equal to X. Okay. So in other words, that missing value D would be X minus 20. In other words. Okay. Represent the above information in a Venn diagram, as you saw, I just did there now. Let's carry on. The next question says, the next question says, how many learners own only a smartphone? So to calculate only a smartphone, I need to determine what X is. But we know that X minus 20 plus 20 plus 28 plus 8, so that plus that, all the parts adds up to its sample space of 150. Okay, so A plus 8 equals 150. So that cancels. So X is equal to 150. So you're going to say 150 minus 28, minus 8. That gives us 144. So 144 owns smartphones. But they're asking you, how many own smartphones only? So they mean to say it's going to be x minus 20, which is uh, 144. Minus 20 is 120. So 124 own smartphones only. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think I typed in the calculator 180 instead of 150. So it's 150 minus 28 minus 8. That gives us 144, not 140. Who have written the number down there? Okay, so that's 114. But they want. Um, smartphones only says so 114 minus 20. So 114 minus 20 gives us 94. That's 94. So the question says in the next question, so it's going to replace this with 94 here. Yeah? So we're going to clear this here. So in question 5.2.3, they ask you to calculate the probability that the learner selected at random from this group owned only a smartphone. So to work out the probability is number of favorable outcomes, in this, in this case, it's smartphones only, which is 94 over the number of possible outcomes, or the, the total number of people in this case, which is going to be 150. So that will be 94 over 150, that gives us 47 over 75, or 0 0.63. In B, they say, own at most one type of the, um, of, uh, of the device, okay? So, if we're going to consider at most one type of the device, so it must be 28 and 94. And we're going to consider 8 because I didn't say at least one device. It says at most one type of device. Okay, so it's a one and this. So in this case, it would simply be 
94 plus 28 plus 8, and this is all over 150. So that's going to be 94 uh, plus 28 plus 8 over 150. So that gives you 13 over 15 or 0 0.87. Okay. Then we're getting on with question 6. In question 6.1, question 6.1, we are told that this move this here. In six point one we are told that in the circle with center O called A C has been drawn such that O M is perpendicular to A B. Use Euclidean geometry methods to prove that A C is equal to M C. So we start off by with a construction. We construct. We're going to construct OA and OC, which is also your radius. Okay. Without the construction, you're not going to get the mark for the. For, you could have had your your um, your, your theorem written out beautifully. But without construction, you're not going to get any marks for your, for, your, for your proof. Okay, you must have construction. Proof. So we're going to prove that triangle AOM is so, um, congruent to triangle COM. So you say in triangle AOM and triangle COM. So what can we say? We can say that OA is equal to OC. Why? It's your radius, we can say from construction. Then M1 is equal to M2, which is equal to 90. That was given that OM is perpendicular to AC. Then OM is a common side. Okay, it's in both triangles. And this is enough to conclude congruency. So therefore, triangle AOM is congruent to triangle COM. Why? So we use the right hand hypotenuse and the side. So because that is the case, we can conclude therefore AM is equal to MC. The reason? Triangle AOM is uh, congruent to triangle COM. And that is the theorem which states perpendicular from center to chord by six the port. Next question. Question six point two. In question six point two we are given that OM uh, OQ sorry is perpendicular to PR. If that's the case, then PQ is equal to QR. Why? Perpendicular from center to port by six to port. Then you are told that OQ is X, OP is uh, five, and PR is eight. So it's only in this case. The question says with well, reason solve for x. So in order to solve for x, so in order to solve for x, I need to know what pq is. But we know that pq is equal to four units. Why? Right? As I said now, it's uh, perpendicular from center to chord. By six the pole. Okay, so there's four. Now we can use the theorem of Pythagoras, which states five squared is equal to x squared plus four squared. And your reason here is your Pythagorean theorem with OQP equals x, 90 degrees. Okay, so that's going to give you 25 is equal to x squared plus four squared. So x squared is equal to 25 minus 16, which is 9. The square root thereof is 3. So x is equal to 3. 
Okay, so the next one, 6.3. We are told that in the circle with center O. In the circle with center O. OS is perpendicular to PQ. OS is uh, perpendicular to PR. So if that's perpendicular, we know that that is equal to that. Then OT is perpendicular to QP. Which means to say those two then so equal. Then we are told that OT is 5, which is on the diagram. QP is 24, which is on the diagram. And PR is 25, which is also on the diagram. Determine the length of OS. Put it to one decimal place. So OS is marked with an X then. Okay? So in other words, if I can work out OP, which is the radius, then I can apply Pythagoras in OPS, in triangle OPS. Okay? So, uh, we can start off with saying that, let me just pick this up here. So I'm going to work in blue so we know that the read is what we added on, okay, from the instruction. So we're going to work in triangle. That's in triangle um, P-O-T. Okay, in the triangle here. We can say that Pt is equal to 12 units. Why? Perpendicular from center to chord. Perpendicular from center to chord by sec to chord. Okay. So here's going to like 12 then. We have 5 already, so OP squared. I'm going to apply Pythagoras now, is equal to. Um, 12 squared plus 5 squared. The reason is your Pythagorean, um, uh, Pythagoras, Pythagoras with um, PTO equals 90 degrees. Okay, that's given that um, OT is perpendicular to, to uh, PTO. Okay. So this works out to be uh, 144 plus 25, which is 169. The square root thereof will give you OP or your radius to be 13. Okay, so that's 13. Which is the radius of, of the triangle. Okay, so if we now go in the other triangle. Okay. Let me just take it off. Everything we have calculated is now on the diagram or which was needed. So we're going to now work in this triangle here. And why did I work in the other triangle first? Because we had two unknown sides. Okay? So in triangle POS, we can now say that PS is equal to half of 25. Why? Perpendicular from center to chord. Bisect the chord. Okay. So that is 25 over 2. So we now have x squared is equal to 13 squared minus 25 over 2 squared. The reason is Pythagoras 
with PSO equals 90 degrees. Okay, that was given to us. That we can do in the calculator, so it's going to be 13 squared minus 12.5 squared or 22 to a 25 over 2. squared is 51 over 4. The square root thereof is going to give you 3,57. So your x is 3,57. Okay. 3,57 units. Then the next question is 6.4. We are told the circle with center O. J OK is 120. Determine with reason the value of F. So you see the angle at center is twice the angle at circumference. Needs to be something on the same side. So the question came in yesterday, why is that F not 60? Okay, but it can't be. Because as you see, this angle here is 60. So we need to know the size of this reflex O angle. Okay. So 6.4.1. So you say reflex um, J O K is equal to 120, one, uh, 360 minus 120, which is 240 degrees. Why? Because it's a revolution or angles around the point. That's 240 degrees. So angle F is equal to half of 240, okay? So it's going to be 240 divided by 2, which is 120, and the reason then is angle at center equals 2 times angle at circumference, okay? So that's 240, this is 120 degrees. The next question says, if it's further given that JH is equal to, JH is equal to um, HK, that means you say that those angles are equal. Why? So it's angles opposite equal sides. What type of quadrilateral is JOKH? Give a reason for your answer. So since that is equal then, and that will be equal. Why would that be equal? Because it's radius. So we're going to say that um, OK is equal to OJ. Why? Because of your radius. Then J H is equal to, to K um, H that was given. OK. Then these opposite sides are these opposite angles are equal. Okay? So it could be, let's see. Nope, it's not a kite. I always want to say it's a, it's a parallelogram. But there's not enough information to determine what type of quadrilateral this is. Because I can't prove congruency here. Yeah? I'm shorting a, another, um, the link between the sides there. No parallel lines is given, so... I think at this point you gave the marks to the learners to attempt to the question. Okay, so this question here is shorting information. Otherwise, if I understood it wrong, you can just contact me on the number on the side. Okay? And the last question was the bonus question. So here we are told that in the figure, B, E, B, C, E, D is a square. So we have a square. With sides, 4 centimeters. So 4, 4, 4 and so on. 
So the radius of that is going to be, of course, 2. A semicircle is constructed on each side of E, B, and D, C. So the radius is 2. Four smaller semicircles are constructed on each side of E, D, and B, C. So the radius of the smaller circle here, of course, is going to be 1. Remember, that's 4. Your radius is 1. The diameter is going to be 2, so the radius has to be 1. Okay. Let the area of the figure be A. The question says, let's calculate the area of the figure in other words. So your area, of course, you've got a square plus a circle with a radius of 2 plus you've got two circles with a radius of 1. You see this circle and that, uh, that semicircle makes one circle and this semicircle here with that semicircle makes another full circle. Okay? That semicircle with the semicircle also makes a, a full circle with a radius of 2. Since it's the area, we're going to work out the areas of these shapes. The area of a square is side squared plus the area of a circle is pi of squared. That is the radius 1 plus pi of 2 pi of radius 2. Okay. So that would simply be. 4 squared, which is 16. Pi, your radius here is, uh, of course, 2. 2 squared plus 2 times pi, your radius, of course, in this case, is 1. So that's going to give you 40, it's not 14, but 16. Plus 2 squared is 4. So 4 pi plus 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2 pi. So the answer is 16 plus 6 pi. Okay. 16 plus 6 pi which makes the answer of the 4 P. Okay. So that basically brings us to the end of uh, this paper. Alright. Enjoy the weekend.